Understanding Hearing Loss in Children with Down Syndrome. Throughout this presentation, we will discuss the following. The definition of Down Syndrome, understanding hearing and hearing loss in children with Down Syndrome, understanding the purpose of the study, understanding the methods as to how data was collected for research, understanding the measures taken to determine whether a hearing loss is present, having an awareness of the results conducted from this research, as well as knowing the importance in educating primary physicians, parents, and teachers. So what is Down syndrome? Down syndrome is a genetic disorder that occurs when an individual has a full or partial extra copy of chromosome 21. Down syndrome causes a distinct facial appearance, intellectual disability, developmental delays, and may be associated with thyroid or heart disease. Early intervention programs with a team of therapists and special educators who can treat each child's specific situation are helpful in managing Down syndrome. Down syndrome is the most frequent occurring chromosomal disorder and leading cause of intellectual disability in the United States. People with Down syndrome have an increased risk for certain medical conditions such as congenital heart defects, respiratory and heart problems, Alzheimer's disease, childhood leukemia, and thyroid conditions. Many of these conditions are now treatable, so most people with Down syndrome lead healthy lives. Children with Down syndrome are at a higher risk for hearing loss as compared with their typically developing peers. With an incidence of 1 per 691 live births, an estimated 6,000 infants with Down syndrome are born in the United States per year. Incidence of hearing loss in children with Down syndrome is significantly greater, reported to be as high as 78% with the majority exhibiting conductive hearing loss. These outcomes can be especially detrimental to a child with Down syndrome who already has an existing developmental delay. Abnormal middle ear status is much more common in individuals with Down syndrome. Treatment of hearing loss can be more complicated in children with Down syndrome. A child with Down syndrome is at higher risk for complications such as persistent otoria and eardrum perforations due to a lack of lamina purpurea tissue, which is a connective tissue inside the membrane. This study analyzes clinical data for a large, diverse population of children with Down syndrome, focusing on hearing loss and interventions. The objective of this study was to evaluate the prevalence of permanent and transient hearing, hearing aid use as recommendation, and middle ear dysfunction in children with Down syndrome. The design of the method was retrospective analysis of data collected on 308 children with Down syndrome who received an audiological evaluation in 2013 as part of their medical care at a large pediatric hospital. The data that was collected included results from an audiometric testing, normal or abnormal findings, and testing related behaviors. The patients were excluded from analysis if their audiologist did not attempt frequent specific audiological assessment or if their doc flow sheet was minimally complete, meaning information was missing on 20% or more of the variables. As for the participants of this study, there were 168 boys and 140 girls, all between the ages of 4 and 5, that took part in this research. All 308 children underwent a total of 582 audiological evaluations during the year. There were two key measures taken to determine whether a hearing loss was present, audiologic evaluation and tympanometry testing. For audiologic evaluation, hearing evaluation data was extracted from two clinical doc flow sheets embedded in the hospital's medical records. The audiological evaluation was categorized as normal, essentially normal, abnormal, or inconclusive. To qualify for a normal test, a child's response had to be obtained at 20 decibel hearing level or better across the speech frequency spectrum. For tympanometry testing, results were coded as normal or abnormal using the Jerger classification system. The Jerger classification system included five levels of testing. 
A, which meant normal eardrum movement, B, which meant flat tracing slash restricted eardrum movement, C, which meant retracted eardrum movement, AS, which meant restricted slash shallow eardrum movement, and then there was AD, which meant hypermobile eardrum movement. Once again, these classifications were all from the Jurger classification system. If you take a look at this table, it shows participant and hospital-wide patients in comparison in 2013. It breaks the demographics down by gender as well as race. The graph is also split between audiological evaluation study participants and overall patients with Down syndrome at the hospital. There were more males than females with the audiological evaluation study. In addition, there were more males than females in the overall patients with Down syndrome at the hospital. Studies have shown that more males with Down syndrome were born to young couples aged less than 35 years, while elderly couples had more girls with Down syndrome. In conclusion, there were more males than females with Down syndrome throughout this case study. The results of the testing were, of the 300 children evaluated, 111, which is approximately 36%, were diagnosed with some degree of hearing loss. 35 ears were sensory neural, 103 were conductive, and 28 were mixed. 64 children had inconclusive results with the available data. Permanent hearing loss was identified in 24.9% of the children, among whom bilateral, 75.4%, and conductive, 33.3% hearing losses occurred most often. Descriptive statistics for characterizing confirmed permanent hearing losses are presented in Table 2. Reduced subject numbers were used in calculating this information due to the fact that permanent hearing loss variables were added several months after data collection began. Data for this table was collected from 229 unique patients. A total of 24.9% of patients were defined as having permanent hearing loss in 2013. This table shows the results of tympanogram testing. Tympanometry tests the condition of the middle ear and mobility of the eardrum. Of the 308 children, 119 had a history of middle ear infusion, with the first indication presenting at a mean age of 4.5. Changes in the middle ear function were examined in the 91 children who had results for more than one tympanometry test in 2013. These data excluded patients who had pressure equalization tubes and just one other result. Were hearing aids used in this study? Well, data were run to determine how many children did not have hearing laws confirmed, but still had a hearing aid recommendation. Of the 308 participants, 55 patients were current hearing aid users and 17 had hearing aids recommended by the end of testing, including 12 patients without confirmed permanent hearing loss. When the Psy Center for Down Syndrome opened in 2010, more referrals were made to the audiology department than any other hospital department illuminating the dire need for audiological involvement in the care of this patient population. This study was conducted to better characterize hearing loss and management in a large, diverse population utilizing recent patient data that reflects current practice in the specialty of pediatrics audiology. In conclusion, the prevalence of hearing loss and abnormal middle ear status 
is high in the pediatric population with Down syndrome. Children with Down syndrome have a much higher incidence of multiple types of hearing loss when compared with the general pediatric population. Therefore, it is important for audiological evaluation to follow the American Academy of Pediatric Practice guidelines to monitor the high-risk population and amplification should be considered as an appropriate intervention option if repeated audiological examinations reveal hearing loss. There were both strengths and weaknesses of the study. One strength would be that through the research that was conducted, the results of this study indicated the strong need to educate primary physicians, parents, as well as teachers regarding the importance of referral, early identification, and when needed, use and compliance of amplification, such as hearing aids, to help these children in their speech-language development, psychological development, and educational achievement. One weakness of this study would be the age range was very minimal. The children that were tested were only between the ages of 4 and 5. How does hearing loss affect adults with Down syndrome? How does it affect teens with Down syndrome? Another weakness of the study would be that there were reduced subject numbers that were used in calculating this information due to the fact that permanent hearing loss variables were added several months after data collection began. The research article I chose was called Understanding Hearing and Hearing Loss in Children with Down Syndrome. It was written by Emily Nightingale, Patricia Yoon, Christy Warderdam, D. Daniels, and Fran Hickey. Thank you for watching.